Have you ever been on your way to work or school only to see a traffic crash at the side of the road? Life slows down for a moment to see what happened, to see if anybody's hurt, and to see the activities of first responders. What we often forget about every day, that although small, there's a slight risk of being injured or killed in an auto crash. The World Health Organization lists road traffic injuries as the eighth leading cause of death worldwide. Currently, over 1.25 million fatalities occur on the world's road, and over 50 million individuals are non-fatally injured. By many measures, this is a massively undertreated global health crisis. What have we been doing to think about this? Driver error has long been regarded as a critical factor in over 90% of these accidents. So more recently, we've turned and begin to talk about automation to fix this problem. We first focused on automation to make driving easier, like automatic transmissions, power steering, and cruise control. More recently, we've looked at automation for crash protection and prevention, technologies such as electronic stability control, airbags, forward collision warnings, and more recently, automatic emergency braking. We hear in the news all the time the focus of on automation to make driving easier, perhaps relieving the burden altogether. And not so far in the distance, some cars will indeed become driverless. The context here is that robots can be better drivers than us. But the question becomes, how safe will this all be? Just look at the roads of today. Who would have guessed that automating simple things, such as shifting gears, would have made it so much easier to pick up the smart phone? <laughs> With increased automation comes increased responsibility. And driverless does not mean humanless. Integrating the expertise of humans and machines has long been understood to be critical for safety. Driverless vehicles will need human support, perhaps, perhaps at a far, for some time. In a pursuit of automation, we've very much been letting the technology lead the way and forgetting about, to some degree, the behavior of the driver behind the wheel. While we were once on a pathway to safer roads, in more recent years, our roads have turned more risky. Many would like to blame this on distracted, drunk, drowsy, and drug driving. However, we may need to look beyond the driver themselves. Perhaps a critical elements of vehicle technology, the infrastructure, education, and other factors that may be coming together to impact safety. So as we look to the increasing amount of automation on rural roads, how is this all going to work? As a society, we've been long enamored with automotive technology. We like to touch it, feel it, see it. Automated and our collaborative hands-free driving is here today. Technologies such as Tesla Autopilot, Cadillac Super Cruise, Volvo's Pilot Assist. Here's a sense of how it looks. What was once Jetsons-like science fiction on our roads is occurring. Our role as a driver is changing. Realistically, our automated future is not going to be here tomorrow. It takes about 18 years to change over about 85% of the fleet here in the United States. So for a long time to come, if not forever, there will be a mix of driverless, automation-assisted, and plain old human drivers on the road. What we almost always forget is that our infrastructure was really designed and built for human drivers. Realistically, this is not going to transform seamlessly into a system to enable the future of mobility when we can't even afford to paint the lines, pave the potholes, or fix the bridges in an infrastructure where we're still expected to travel with Model Ts. I've spent years studying human behavior, and it worries me how many individuals and organizations don't understand the level of complexity in the transformation of our system that is required to enable safe, convenient, and enhanced mobility. Technologists, automakers, politicians, and drivers see the world through different lenses. Who's right? Who's wrong? Or is a blend of all views needed? So one disconnect we see today is that many of the safety technologies that we're buying at the dealership are not being enabled. The concepts make sense, but something's not right. Looking here at some data from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, we can look at lane departure warning technologies that were designed and built to mitigate run-off-the-road crashes, one of the world's most deadly. 
In cars equipped with these systems, they're only enabled 45% of the time when they show up at a dealership for service. Our work at MIT suggests that false alarms, confusion over where and when and why these systems are there to support you, is part of the cause. We believe that education is critical to understanding when and where to use these technologies. It appears that many don't realize that with automation comes a responsibility for increased education and systems to promote proper use of the technology. I, for one, often get into my car with backup cameras and remote sensing, backing up out of a parking spot, whether that's parallel or perpendicular, and never fully inspecting the surroundings around me. I think many of us experience that today, and we forget that this was automation all created to assist us, as opposed to replace human sensing. So we've been hearing tales for some time now of how automated vehicles are going to enable safe, more efficient transportation. However, several recent events, including the tragic Uber fatality and several autopilot-related crashes, illustrate that risks remain. Factors related to these crashes suggest that perhaps we need to be thinking more about some of the softer elements of the system. In essence, looking beyond the core automation technology itself. Technologists would say, what's missing? Automakers tell us they're on the road to doing it better. Politicians, can we trust industry to do this for us? On the other hand, us as drivers, when's this driverless system going to be available to take me to work, take my ailing parents to the doctor, or drop my kids off at school by itself, making my daily life a lot easier? So it'll be more than fine tuning the robots. It's going to be more than building a better car. It's going to be more than moving the driver to the passenger seat. Arcane regulatory efforts will need to be cast aside, and as a society, we're going to need to be ready for an evolution versus a revolution of the robots on our road, as they will more likely be able to help get you to safely to work before they're going to be able to take your parents to the doctor or your kids to school on their own. When we think about these systems, there are some tough decisions to make, because everything around how we live and move may need to be upended to get this right. How safe is safe enough? Just safer than the average Joe, or 50% safer? More questions of who to avoid and when. A child playing in the road, or an older couple walking down the sidewalk? Should we be thinking about building automotive vehicles that aim to replace human drivers? It's going to be difficult to build an artificial system with the seemingly irrational behavior of human drivers. We often ignore rules of the road, speeding, squeezing through yellow lights, or making instantaneous movements based upon almost unexplainable movements of other cars around us. When we think about this, how do we begin to develop systems that we trust efficiently, that we won't walk in front of because we know they'll stop, or we won't merge in front of because we know they'll yield? Expectations of the system are critical to building trust, and trust is built on experiences. Education may be a very critical element in developing an understanding of where the advantages of automation are and where and when we may need to take the wheel. Driver monitoring, a highlight in the news, a thing that we need to think about connecting to the automation so it is aware of the driver's attention to the world around us and capable of informing the driver when attention wanes. Infrastructure improvements are critically needed so that the automation is not spoofed by seeming failures in our road infrastructure. These and other changes will not be easy and will not occur without some stimulus. We don't have a unified strategy for automating driverless vehicles here in the United States or much of the rest of the industrialized world. Federal policy discussions are really centered on what I would consider as minor changes. Today's decades old regulatory framework that was created before microprocessors and software ruled the world. Without federal leadership, we have 50 states heading in 50 different directions. Clearly, we need to develop the foundations to enhance the system and accelerate the process of saving lives. Politicians can make radical change difficult in the time frames needed to keep up with this technology. So I'd argue that an alternative approach is really needed. Automated vehicles may seem radical and new, but automation is being leveraged by industries worldwide in countless other settings. There are case studies from these industries 
that we can leverage to build the foundation for this safe mobility system that we all desire. For over 50 years, the Federal Aviation Administration has been working to transform aviation system into the trusted system we know today. The aviation industry has long known that it's the relationship between automation and humans that is critical to safe flight. And that's why autopilot in particular is licensed under the supervision of a human operator. The FAA has stressed pilot education and training, an incredible investment in networked infrastructure, coordinated control and tracking of aircraft, data sharing, and a safety culture. Of this, I see the safety culture aspect perhaps being the most important. The automotive industry has long competed on safety, and perhaps a collaborative safety culture is the critical element to get organizations to collaboratively work together to solve some of the most difficult problems in education, infrastructure, and auto coordination of the automated vehicles on our roadway. The National Transportation Safety Board is charged with investigating major safety-related events related to the transportation infrastructure like planes, trains, and automobile crashes. So by default, this agency already has a role in investigating the recent Uber and Tesla incidents. But changes to this agency are needed as well because cars by their sheer number and the complexity of the operating environment are going to crash far more than planes and trains. Society can't afford to wait a year for an, an investigative report with, from an entity with little enforcement power when hundreds of thousands of automated vehicles are on our roads and the software systems fueling those are changing by the day. So a well-funded, nonpartisan, safety-focused scientific entity really needs to be focused on advancing the insights needed to understand how to fuel the policies and safety developments of the future. If the National Transportation Safety Board remains as it is, one day it will not have the resources to respond to a 787 crash or the ability to impart insights learned fast enough to save lives. Would you want one of your family members or loved ones involved in a crash as a result of a software limitation that was known? The Food and Drug Administration has been regulating the balance of benefits and costs in medical device and pharmaceutical discovery for decades. With so many lives lost to traffic collisions, we need to embrace technology such as automation that can move the needle in a positive safety direction while managing the risks, much like we manage the side effects of a life-saving drug. One asks the question, should we be allowing Waymo to deploy tens of thousands of automated vehicles on our roads without some public understanding of the cost, benefit, risk model, management plan, and tracking system for side effects that may occur after deployment? The clinical trial structure provides us with a clear framework for testing innovations in unknown areas and stages. We could test many vehicle automation technologies in a similar way. Test the system components, check for integrated safety, check for efficacy on the road, and collect more data to garner the findings. In short, requiring that companies demonstrate they can walk before anybody is allowed to run. A strong post-market to program to ensure we have gotten this right or making the changes needed may be the most important piece of the puzzle. So I'm not standing here and saying that we can't move fast. I think we can. A clinical trial structure in the automotive industry could last days or weeks as opposed to the years it takes in the clinic as data coming from vehicles comes much faster. The key here is we need to keep think carefully and stepwise as a society before we allow the technologists too much liberty to treat us as non-consenting test subjects. As such, something new really may be needed here. If the government is going to set stage by itself, we need to think big. I can easily envision something as transformative as the creation of a department in the context of Homeland Security, a new mission, a new budget for a new technology. Realistically, this is not easy. Our government does not move fast, nor do many of the rest of the world. Nor is the technical skill needed to understand this technology really there at the governmental level. As something we really need to think new, radical, different. Perhaps in the context of a private utility with technologists and automakers leading the way, but the public sector charged with protecting benefits and societal goods 
like safety. The context of working together in a public-private partnership where automakers and policymakers come together to draft the policies that are needed, educational approaches, testing programs, infrastructure changes, ethical dilemmas, and answering questions such as how safe is safe enough. All under the air of transparency, a fact that has been missing to date. In essence, trying to create the alignment between stakeholders so that we can fuel the research and efforts that are needed on the softer side of this technology. This is all critical to building our trust in the future of automated systems. The status quo is just not going to work when robots are causing traffic jams. Automated driverless vehicles are our future, but we can't manage this technology with dated measures that were built before the era of software. We know that the free market left on its own is not going to manage the way the cost and benefits well by itself. The biggest problem here may be the will of all the stakeholders to come together along the pathway I describe or an alternate route to make the changes needed. The future of personal mobility and safety is exceedingly bright when coupled with the technology at hand. And bumps on the road that are going to occur, like recent incidents, can be managed. We've been here before. It was collaboration that got us to the moon and back safely. Politicians wanted it. Companies wanted it. Constituents wanted it. So they made it happen. Perhaps that's the best framework to be thinking about the modernization and automation of our mobility ecosystem. In the long run, automated vehicles will enhance safety. The question is, can we collaboratively work together to take the reins of this public health crisis and collaboratively, st strategically move the safety fight forward? I really hope we can. As too many people are dying on the world's roads every day, and I'd like my kids riding and driving in safer roads. It's important we get this right and do it quickly. If we can, automated and driverless vehicles will be the most critical life-saving technology of the century. Thank you.